I'm Crow. I'm a transgender male. I used to be a female model from the age of 12 till 18. And when I was 18, I decided I was going to transition into being a male. I would like to try again and see if maybe I can actually become a male model after everything that I've gone through. From this The first time I thought, wow, I should have been born a boy instead of a girl was probably when I was either 10 or 11 years old, so. I never really understood the difference between genders when I was younger. I'd always been one of the guys. I never got along well with the girls. It was when they did sex ed class. What they did was they would split us up into boys and girls. Yeah, I always looked out the window and saw the boys playing football, and they got to play games while we had to learn about what grossness our body was going to do when we got older. And I was like, well, why can't I just go out and hang with the boys? Like, why do I have to sit here and learn all this gross stuff? Like, I don't want that to happen to my body, but... That was probably the first time I reached that kind of boundary of, well, what is the difference between a girl and a guy? Is it have to be physical or emotional? And... I don't know, it was a really confusing time for me. Yeah, I started dressing like a guy and uh, started getting bullied pretty bad after that. For some reason, this kid just got it in his head that uh, he didn't like the way I was dressed and uh, he started calling me emo, which uh, is supposed to be a uh, slur for a cutter, so someone who cuts their wrists. And uh, the full term is just emotional and then other people started getting into it and started believing that I actually cut myself. In the first year, like, I didn't really care much. I was like, well, I'm not. All my friends kind of turned on me, um, and that's when I made my best friend. There's three main people that have, uh, I feel, that have supported me along the way. Oh man, being back here is weird. It One of the biggest awkward. ones is definitely Ashton, uh, my best friend. He's been with me since elementary school. <laughs> which which grade was it that I told you? Fourth. Fourth grade. Man, I wish I could be a boy. Mm -hmm. And like, at that time, like, I, I just meant it as like a offhand, like, yeah, life would be easier as a guy. Yeah. But like, it stuck pretty true. Oh, the playground. He was there for before I transitioned, when I was questioning myself, but didn't know about transitioning. <laughs> Touche. I don't think I did. I don't know. I think we definitely bonded over our mutual awful experiences of getting bullied and called whatever name under the sun. Being like getting called emo all the time. Um, that was a big thing for both of us. I would beat kids up for it. Like fully, the guys would would call me that, and I would be like knocking them to the ground Ashton was my only friend in grade seven I I literally had no other friends no one knows what sick you've got you remember when we used to pull eggs on these things if yes I break away, if we break away can we make it back in time? 
I really wanted to be able to be a boy, but I knew that physically I couldn't. So at that point, I didn't know that there was any way to change. So I figured I might as well kind of learn how to be a girl because mm -hmm. I didn't feel anything naturally to be able to express myself as a girl or be feminine. Kian came home from a birthday party and was like, Mom, what do you think about me modeling? And this is my daughter that has been running around up at the campsite, being one of the tomboys and everything else. I was like, okay, well, you know, like any other thing that your children come towards you and want to talk to you about and want to try out, you give them the opportunity. The next thing you know, Kian is off to Japan as soon as he's old enough. Modeling in Japan at 13 was uh, pretty awesome. First photo shoot, I felt so awkward and weird. I had never had photos taken of me before and like felt like I was attractive in any way. So yeah, it was really interesting. And when they put the makeup on and did my hair, I was like, oh my gosh, like I actually look pretty. <laughs> I look like a girl and a nice girl too, wow. <laughs> From there, we have been to China, Taiwan, Toronto, and Milan. And then at 15, I started letting Kian go by himself because he'd had that much experience. When I started high school, I also started modeling. That was kind of to show them like, a uh, fuck you guys, like I'm getting money because I'm beautiful and I can go to different countries and do what I want kind of thing, um, just to kind of get back at them. The whole time with the bullying, I figured if I was a guy, this wouldn't have happened. If I was a guy, I, I'd still be friends with everyone. Bullying makes you feel like you shouldn't be around. You're a burden to people, you're a burden to people that you care about. And it makes you feel like you it would be better if you just weren't around, if you didn't exist. Usually I would just go home and lock myself in my room turn all the lights off. I just couldn't, couldn't handle being in that environment, being with those kids around. I would have been 11 when I first contemplated suicide and had those really dark days. The very first time I thought about being a boy and why I had been born a girl instead, I met a friend in, I think it was grade nine. I ended up going to what they call an anime convention with them. I found out that this friend I had just made was uh, trans, transgender, and when they brought me into the group, a lot of them were either transgender or gay or bi or gender fluid. It was the first time I had heard that you could actually change gender. When I first went into the community, I didn't want to use my real name. I already wanted to use my more male name that I had given myself, which is Crow. I was going by the name Crow with close friends, um, not not regular like school friends. I kind of wasn't mentioning that to them, but like at least the cosplay community is where I felt like my family was. So I told all of them and was like, "Yeah, call me Crow. Use male pronouns." 
I think my decision to transition came gradually, very gradually. The last year that I was in high school, I was already sort of like, you know, binding at school and dressing more androgynously. I had a lot of, I don't know, anger towards myself about it for a long time, a lot of guilt. You know, why couldn't I just be a girl or, or why couldn't I just be cisgender or why couldn't I just have like an easy, straightforward life that makes sense? I was actually 17 and I was dating a guy and I was really in love with him and I told him I'm trans and he dumped me. And then I was like, okay, <laughs> I think this is time. <laughs> and I, two months later, started uh, at least attempting to get into a gender clinic and talk to somebody. That was like when I took the leap and actually came out and was like, yeah, I'm trans and <laughs> this is what I'm doing. I was Ashton's sounding board through his transition. It's true. And then I was like, I don't want to seem like I'm copying you, but I'm also transgender and like, <laughs> I'm just scared to do the hormones and the surgeries at the moment. I knew I couldn't pretend to be a girl for that much longer. It had gotten to a point, I think it was 16, where I was like, I need to be a boy. In Japan, in Tokyo, was probably when I first kind of felt my confidence kind of come back, what I was okay with, what I wasn't okay with. Once I knew that China was the place I was gonna be going next, I knew that was my last trip. I was also just very done, so I just stopped kind of caring about what other people thought. China was the last one that's been now just about two years ago. And uh, Kian had been saying to me for about a year before that he was thinking about quitting. Yeah, when I was in China, there was a lot that happened in China that was just crazy. <laughs> I didn't like the way that uh, being a female model, how you were kind of treated. It's like pieces of meat and, you know, people look over you and then look at the next one kind of thing. I had finally had the last of it and was like, well, you know what, I'm done pleasing people and just came back after a job. I had told my mom, my agency before mm -hmm. that I was gonna stop modeling. It was my last trip. And two days before he was gonna come home when he had no more jobs, he sent me a photo. And in this photo is the floor and a pair of scissors and a ponytail lying on the ground. Had to do a ponytail anyway. Took a pair of scissors, cut it. Didn't care. I was like, well, I'm a boy now. <laughs> Surprise, everyone. <laughs> I didn't realize at the time when Kian had chopped off his hair that it was about transitioning. Um, I thought it was just a matter of putting his foot down and saying, OK, I'm done with the modeling. I tried that last time, I'm not enjoying it, chopping off my hair because no one is going to want a girl that looks like this as a model. It didn't make sense to me because this is someone that has made a career out of modeling, being feminine and being beautiful and, and wearing makeup and, and gorgeous clothing. And it's the dream that all girls have. She was a princess in front of the camera. She was the center of attention as this beautiful woman. So where is this all coming from? And it's, not, it's just not computing in my brain. Being transgender was the first thing that she didn't support me in to begin with, so um, it was a complete surprise. I thought she would take it like, okay, and then I thought she would be asking questions and then elaborating and then trying to learn about being transgender with me. I had given Keon a six months, I don't want to hear about this at all, I'm not going to have a discussion with you at all until the six months is up. She didn't want to discuss it. She didn't want to hear about it. She, she said, wait six months before we have this discussion again, and don't try to talk to me about it in between. The six month waiting period was more about specifically our relationship and what I have seen and how I'm going to process it. Make sure you are 100% clear on this is what I want. I had to still be a female, even though she knew for that whole time and yeah it was it was really hard for that i knew that you were like trying to push me and make sure that i'm making the right decision but yeah it was and still hard on me so exactly and i purposely made it hard on you i 
had no idea how to feel because it felt like I lost a parent. So, yeah, it, uh, it was it was hard for that first six months. With the way that Kian was with his friends and everything else, and all of a sudden there's one that is transitioning, then there's another one that's thinking about transitioning, and then there's another one that isn't quite sure what they want to do, and then all of a sudden Kian is coming on about what do you think about me being a boy. So I didn't really take it seriously. I thought it was just a fad that's going to go on, and, and he's going to just, you know, like typical teenagers, he's going to just be interested in something for a while, and then he's going to let it go. If Keon had come to me at 18 years of age when this really now became a solidified thing happening and said, I want to get married. I'm getting married tomorrow. Um, that's a life choice, but you can get out of that life choice. There is a way out. It was really difficult on me. I was very anxious, wondering if you were going to be OK with it or not. But in the end, I still had to choose doing what I felt would have to be uh, what I what I do for me. It got to the point that I was like, at five months, I was starting to think like, maybe I should just do the hormones without her. Maybe I should just start it and be like, well, it started so you can't stop me. If I had to pretend that I was a female for the rest of my life, I, I probably wouldn't make it through the year. When the six months was over and it was time to start talking, and, uh, and I said, okay, I have a couple questions for you. I said, my biggest question, I said, and this is where my confusion personally came in. I said, you were the one that came to me. You're the one that wanted to do this job. That is so feminine. And now you want this so you can understand there's gonna be a little push me, pull you confusion going on. And he looked at me, he goes, I was trying to learn how to be a girl. And it's like, okay, you don't have to, I don't have no more questions. I'm in 100%, what do you need? And I'm there for you. And it, we've just gone <laughs> literally balls to the wall. Um, even with doing things wrong, I think that's part of parenting. We're gonna make mistakes. And um, instead of beating myself up about what I could have done differently, um, the biggest thing is just to remember that this is the person that you love. Dexter! Hey, how are you doing? Hey! And that hasn't changed. And remember how scary it is for them to come forward and to come to you and just say, this is what's happening with me. I need you. And that's what coming out is. Is they're saying they need you. This is going to be the last photo shoot as a female before I get my uh, testosterone shot. So yeah, it's, it's the, the last hurrah, basically, so. We're gonna make this count. You see, we're, we're gonna have like three sets here. You know, your child believes that you love them enough, that no matter what. Yeah. And uh, when you have those moments that all of a sudden you realize that your child is afraid. It's so lost. Mm -hmm. When you think they're so grounded, it's really, really hard. And that's also a moment that you have to realize it has absolutely nothing to do with you. It's about them. It's about what they need, not about what they want. And you're failing as a parent if you don't listen. And if you don't give your child what they need, that's when you're failing. You're not failing because your child isn't what you thought they should be. You're failing because you're not letting your child be who they need to be. Yeah. I know. <laughs> well, well you look I, great. Might, I might thicken up a little. Are you? Yeah, yeah. 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 maybe get to 110 pounds yeah. instead of 100. Yeah. <laughs> maybe like just pure muscle. Oh. I don't know. I feel like even after I transition, I'll probably still wear some like female ish clothing because, you know, once you're confident, then it's like guys can look good while wearing feminine clothes, so. <laughs> I hope to see my face get a bit uh, more kind of manly features because I have very soft and 
refined feminine features. So yeah, I'm hoping to get that like where it gets like the slight muscle that comes right there. I'm excited about the prospect of shooting Keon after the transformation is complete. I was like, yeah, 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 let's do it. Let's do it. I'll be part of this, uh, you know, from the first, you know, from this shoot before that transformation and then be a part of it after, so I'm excited. What I, I can't wait to see is like how he's gonna fill out, right? And see how he's gonna look, uh, you know, from, from, from every sense. For the story, you know, making it gender neutral, but I really love the, the content that we got. Really love the shots we got. Yeah, I like that. When I was told about the story, I was like, yeah. so, so excited <laughs> to be a part of it. You're amazing. <laughs> Even though we had a rocky start between me and my mom for when I first came out as being transgender, um, after she started understanding it and understanding that this was a choice that I had to make and that it wasn't just the new thing to do, once she understood that I truly meant to do this with all my heart, she supported me through absolutely everything and was there every step of the way. I, uh, I just went in and uh, got my prescription, my little testosterone vial. That means I'm, I'm going to be starting testosterone soon and <laughs> I'm so excited about it. It's official. I'm starting. I get to be really lucky and have puberty twice with one child. <laughs> this is going to be fun. <laughs> Skin oiliness and acne. Facial and body hair growth. Scalp hair loss. Yes. So you, you might be my bald gay son. Clitoral enlargement. Um, apparently we're gonna have to have a little looser pants on you from my understanding. Now she's, uh, she's like my biggest yeah, fan. Yeah, oh yeah, you got the big guns <laughs> going on there. Body fat redistribution. <laughs> she's just, uh, just been happy to try to help out in any way she can. Um, she's so proud of me, so it's an amazing feeling. Benefits means it is a permanent change. Thinning and atrophy of vaginal tissues. So, yeah. Which will get removed. So. Okay. I wanted to get my first shot. It represents uh, probably one of the biggest steps I'm gonna be taking in this whole process. first real big step that's being able to get my body to start changing, my voice to start changing, everything to kind of be more the way I want it to be. This was a big one. My child is now becoming masculine. Happy birthday to you, hey, happy birthday to you, oh, happy birthday to you. It's a big day. Um, I'm going to touch on something that um, I thought about after the fact. So the other day, you did that photo shoot. Yeah. I have watched you in front of a camera for years now. You've been doing the modeling since you were 12 and a half years old. I have seen many, 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 many photo shoots that you've done. I have never seen the confidence 
that I saw in you the other day when you got in front of that camera being you. That was uh, that was really, really cool. And that's something I, I hope that you follow up with and, and do more with. First time, aside from the clinic after I got my uh, prescription for the vial of testosterone. Sorry. So we're all here just to support pretty much trans youth and educating and saving lives. Uh, that's the goal. It's not that easy to go back in time. It's no secret that I put my heart on the Watching me Meeting Cass was absolutely amazing. I'm kind of curious as to like the biggest kind of thing you're feeling right now. I've noticed I've been a lot happier. Seeing him be like absolutely confident in himself. Oh, I have man shoulders now. This is awesome. This is perfect. This is okay. I want to stand a little taller now. <laughs> and not being afraid to just, I don't know, just be a person. <laughs> I, it's kind of cool like, going through just talking to someone who's going through it because I feel like I've been so isolated in terms of from the transgender community because I came up like pretty like early early uh, early and like alone like I didn't know any other transgender people I didn't have anyone who's going through it I, don't, I honestly don't even remember how I first heard the term uh, transgender um, like I've always wanted to be a boy you know when I was two I was asking her when my penis was gonna grow in like all the other boys, and uh, <laughs> I was sorely disappointed to find out uh, that that would never happen for me. I've just like known all along, so I mean, at 17, I came out, and coming to that realization was just really like, like a brief moment of clarity, and then literally, you know, uh, no one else knew. I was terrified to tell my girlfriend, I was terrified to tell everyone else, and no matter how many people you have supporting you, no matter how many people you have trying to understand how you feel. There will never be anyone that will understand the inner struggle that you've had to go through and the changes you're gonna have to go through to get to where you wanna be. And you know, that's where the community really helps out. So this is basically the sort of non book trans area. So you've got sort of binders here. I have a half one on right now just because it's I find it easier to slip in if I'm kind of quickly going to go do something. Um, though I do prefer the longer ones. So it would be like a, a full like, like, like this. a tank top almost. Yeah. yeah. And the one I have has um, has the binding part only about up to here. Right. And then kind of like a swimsuit ish fabric right. down here. Right. So it's like Under Armour. Right. So then I just fold that up to about here, halfway, and then hold on to where the actual tough binding is, and then try to like slide it on. It's good, you usually just kind of adjust your chest a bit so that it's evenly flat. Um, but yeah, aside from that, for the first while it feels kind of tight because your body has to get used to it, and also the binder itself has to kind of shape to your body too. Yeah, it used to be a small, small D to a large C, and then after binding, it has actually um, flattened down, and it's not as firm, I've noticed, so it got a little smaller, yay! I don't really feel like I identify with that part of my body, and in fact, one of the things that I dealt with um, in my early, like, dysphoria, that I knew it was dysphoria, was, like, binding all day, and then coming home and taking my binder off and being like, whoa, like, that's my body. I completely would like dissociate from that and not even remember that I like had breasts and then I'd come home and be like, okay, <laughs> dang. I'll come out of the shower, like I won't even like think about it, I'll come out of the shower and like be getting dressed and be like, time to put my binder back on and I like look down, I'm like, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> don't look down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> don't look down. I know the feeling. <laughs> yeah, don't look down is like a trans rule of showering, I think. 
So these are sort of the higher end ones are um, what's this particular company? So they actually look much more realistically like a penis. For and sure. they even feel it. I and they actually feel, feel yeah, they actually feel more. They're soft. They've got like real gushy flesh material kind of. My friends literally grab one and like start. <laughs> and, <they shoot. laughs> <around, yeah. laughs> and this is more like a dildo. So you could wear this in like a like a harness or whatever, and you could actually have sex with this. You're basically interact, right? Yeah. If you want, and you've just got this, you can also add testicles on your own. You can even add a vibration to the testicles if you want, oh, so you can get a little bit of extra boost for fun. Okay. Um, and then this, you can wear it as a packer, and then you can actually stand and pee at a urinal if you want to, so you don't have to use a stall or be a stall man. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. yeah. The only thing would be, like, would you be able to clean it, like, right there That's on the spot? That's the only thing. You'd probably so... have to do, like, a little Kleenex sponge. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. That would be a little weird yeah. to try cleaning for the first while, yeah. But I can assure you that some straight guys are dribblers, so. <laughs> when I first got a packer, it was kind of like around the same time I got a binder. I just like went all gung ho and wanted everything. everything. I was just like, I want it all at once. Um, I got the pack and pee. But, like I work construction, so it was yeah. just super uncomfortable, like moving around all the time. I literally just got lazy with it. I'd try it on, and it was, and it would be really awesome and feel like great. And then, like the band would loosen, like because it was just like some elastic. Got to the point where I was just like, you know what, I'm, <laughs> yeah. I'm just gonna nix this because it's just taking up way too much of my time. Like, I mean, like I'm not even adjusting my balls anymore. I'm just like <laughs> I'm just adjusting the strap all the time. <laughs> like, at this point, I'm like, okay, medical things have come along far enough that. Now I, I will have the option probably within the next three to five years of having an actual transplant, which would provide feeling and functionality. Um, so I'm going to be waiting with that. But if that hadn't happened, if they hadn't done the first successful one, um, then I, I would have already been on the waiting list for getting a tran or getting the surgery, the bottom surgery. It's scary to go under the knife for something that's not, you know, medically necessary. It's scary when it is medically necessary too, but it's scarier almost when it's like a box you're ticking, like, yes, I signed my rights away, yes, I signed my pulse away potentially, like, it's scary. Like the big, okay, this is not, I'm not ready for this yet, was that, you know, like they'll cut everything and kind of, you know, I guess, pull it out in a, in a sense. and you have to take like a massive skin graft from your arm or your leg. Yeah. And I'm kind of like looking like, okay, well, like what do I want tattooed on my dick at this point? <laughs> like, <laughs> so I, I, I opted to wait to see if uh, science would improve. The trans community is really kind of going through a big awakening in the same way that the queer community did sort of in the 60s and 70s kind of. It used to be sort of queer studies with a little bit of transgender and now it's transgender with a little bit of queer studies. <laughs> So like this last Pride, we ordered more transgender flags than we've ever ordered before, and we still sold out before Pride. <laughs> oh, wow. the choice. This means that I can start applying for my name change. <laughs> Once I have this and everything is approved, then I'm gonna start going to my job as male only. Luckily my job is very generic and gender neutral. What I do for work is background actor or extra. So as soon as these papers go through, then I'm going to have a lot more confidence to be able to tell people that if, if they're asking questions, just be like, well, I'm male and I want to be cast as male only roles, so. <laughs> the makeup people have been asking me, um, Oh, it's kind of, they're, they're, some of them just look, but others that know that I'm trans, they're like, okay, so when are you going to start shaving your little mustache thing? And I'm like, oh, I want to shave. Here is my attempt to shave for the first time. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha. 
I won't get into great details about Kian's father. His father had decided not to be part of his life, at least at that point in time, and it's stayed that way. So I knew I was gonna be a single parent right off the bat. And I was fine with that. That was never, never an issue whatsoever. Two years later, after he had me, he had a, another kid with uh, someone who is now his wife. And then another two years after that, he had another kid. So uh, he never wanted to talk to me previous to that. And that even though he couldn't handle the responsibility of a kid, that all of a sudden two years later, oh, he can handle a kid and a wife and another kid and not even bother trying to talk to me when I was still under 10 years old. So that, no. When I was pregnant with you, I kept having a dream. And I had a dream about me walking with my son along the beach. And it happened over and over and over again. It was a very specific dream. So, go ahead and open it. And we now have a painting of me with my son when he was a child. <laughs> <laughs> this is the one and only picture that my son and I have of him being a young child and me and him being my son. I hope you really enjoy it. I love it. Oh God, here we go. <laughs> Water <works>. oh. <laughs> Thank you, Mom. So it's been uh, almost eight months, seven and a half so far. Um, yeah, it's been going good. Um, uh, my voice um, stopped kind of dropping, so um, my period also came back. So my doctor had me up the dosage. So right now, just waiting for that to kind of kick in. Just mentally, I was at a break, at a um, block where I couldn't give myself the shot. So I had to get my friend to do it or go in and get the doctors to do it. So I'm still kind of new at it. I haven't messed up yet, but you know, there's always the chance. All right, so you have it upside down. That way you don't have any bubbles. Do some taps. Now we're going to unscrew this. And this goes in the sharp container and you never have to look at it again. Scary needle is gone. And now we get to do the needle stuff. Go until you have that little droplet. And then we're gonna grab an area here. Oh no, <laughs> I'm tripping myself out. <laughs> All right, <sighs> I can do this. Oh my gosh.
starting, you know, grade eight, grade nine, that self-awareness when you're really aware of how you look, your body, the changes that are happening as you're going through puberty. Looking in the mirror was the hardest thing for me. Like, I just wanted to break the mirror every single time. I absolutely hate what I saw. That amount of self-hate, like, there's a lot of destructive habits that come out of that. Alcohol and smoking and, um, you know, like pills and a lot of that kind of thing, right? Suicide attempts and just a lot of self-harm. Instead of cutting myself, I would go home, I would blast music as loud as it would go, and I would just like repeatedly smack my head against the wall until I was so numb and so lightheaded. For me, it wasn't about feeling a different kind of pain, it was about not feeling at all. I did that quite a bit, and that's definitely something that I've later on in life suffered a lot of concussions. I never knew about the head bashing. I knew the black, there was blackness. I just didn't know how I could communicate with him. You know, we tried, we tried to go to a counselor. Um, and it seemed like such a private journey, and we, as parents, just felt totally powerless. So there was a brick wall around him. He has lived this by himself, uh, not because we didn't want to be there with him, um, but again, that brick wall was so th thick. The closest time I think I came to like actually just killing myself was I just drank and swallowed a ton of pills. And as much as I hated myself and as much as I wanted to die, in that moment, I panicked. There was some glimmer that was telling me that I don't want to die, like it's not over yet. And I ran to my mom and woke her up and I ended up throwing everything up. Huh. It's horrible. You feel powerless and that's a hard thing to deal with. Can't believe I'm crying about it all these years later. It stays. And that was, in some ways, as horrible as it was, it was the first time that he allowed me in. I just thank my lucky stars I still have him. My mom is just hands down the most incredible person on this earth because I can honestly say that if I did not have my mom, I wouldn't be here today. I can wait for you to change, but we're good with that too. I appreciate every day that I have my son and I'm able to feel admiration and um, amazement and the courage that your child needs to have and that my child has to be who he is. And um, really, it's just about gender. He's still the same person I gave birth to. The envelope has changed a little bit, <laughs> and uh, we celebrate that. But I'm just really lucky to have him with us still. There was an urgency for Cass. For him, he just needed to have that physical uh, surgery in order to feel that he could go forward. I went to, uh, for chest surgery out in Florida. It all happened so fast. I remember him un unwrapping. I looked down and said, holy fuck, they're gone. <laughs> and it was just like, you know, I had these tiny nipples that were just like sewn right back on and it was just like, I had a complete flat chest for the first time in my life. That was for me, the point where I started to feel even remotely comfortable in my body. We're at the uh, surgeon's office. Um, we're gonna go see him and he's gonna be the one that's gonna be doing the uh, 
breast reduction surgery for me. So we're gonna do the consultation and he's gonna sit down and talk with me and make sure that I'm familiar with the procedure. How long have you been considering the surgery side of this? Since I was 16. I am 21 now. I don't have to look at them awkwardly as they like look at my gender marker and look at my face and they're like, huh? One of the first questions I get from non-transgender and straight people is, you're trans, does that mean you like girls? It is probably one of the most common questions I get. And all the time I'm like, no, just because I'm trans does not mean I'm into girls. It's actually, for me specifically, yeah. it's the exact opposite. <laughs> I have a fe phobia of female parts, and <laughs> even the thought of being with like a physically female person is just like not in, in my registry. And yeah, like, like that. I couldn't, I couldn't. I've always been attracted to girls, and that hasn't changed. Mm -hmm. Like, I, you know, and... Like, that's just me. I mean, I was, I was a lesbian, I identified as a lesbian before I transitioned into a male. So, you know, I technically went from gay to straight. Yeah. So it's... Whereas for me, it's the opposite, yeah, going from straight, straight to, to gay. gay and yeah, because at some point in your life, if you're trans and you like people, yeah. <laughs> you're, you're going to be gay. Yeah. At some point yeah. in the transition. Or at the very least bisexual. There or at least go. bisexual. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's going to be... Know, you're going to fit in that, in that section at some point, unless you're just like, no, I don't like people, just never touch me. <laughs> <laughs> stay away. Just stay away. Yeah. Today, I am incredibly pleased to see our government is taking the next step by amending the Human Rights Code to include explicit language that reaffirms the fact that transgender persons are clearly protected by the law. All those in favor, please rise. Uh, on a day like today, where we introduce legislation to change our human rights code to finally explicitly protect transgender people, uh, I'm incredibly excited. You know, transitioning is like it's a personal battle, and then it's also a battle of trying to represent yourself in society, but also try to express yourself without fear, you know, the reassurance and the safety that you know, we don't have to be scared to be ourselves. It sets a good precedent for other, you know, demographics of Parliament and also other countries even. I think it can apply to everyone everywhere. One of our recommendations was, of course, to support the um, gay-straight alliances in schools um, and basically to beef up the uh, Human Rights Code to include everybody. And so it was very exciting to include gender identity and gender expression. All right, so um, I'm actually gonna be getting my, uh, oh, what's the name of it, hysterectomy. I'm gonna be getting that done soon. And that's where they remove all the internal female parts. Kian never got nervous, which I found really odd. I was getting more nervous just thinking about him and what he had to go through and uh, trip out there, got him up early in the morning. He was obviously, we'll see, a little groggy, but uh, he was doing just fine. Getting ready to go to the hospital, get my surgery. <laughs> and then uh, they said when we got to the hospital, staff, they were fantastic, by the way, really, really great people there. No one judged me, actually the first, um, first nurse to come when I was actually positioned in a proper room. 
was a male nurse and he was really enthusiastic about uh, me doing the changeover and he's like, yeah, I was wondering about, I looked at the patient file and it was like, oh, a male, but in for hysterectomy. And he was a little confused about that. And then when he saw me, he understood and he was like, oh, okay. And yeah, he was really thought that, that I was changing for myself was really cool. And was really supportive of that. So that was really fun having that. I think personally, it's a risk that you should be willing to take if this is what you really want because a lot of this comes with being transgender, comes with the risk of being judged. Um, thus far, I haven't been judged negatively. I've had a lot of people like, oh, but you make such a pretty girl. And I'm like, but I also make a pretty man. <laughs> and then we have these weird puffing heating. Uh, so waiting to see the surgeon and get everything sorted out. It wasn't that much longer after that that they took him into surgery and then it hit me like a ton of bricks when it just happened. <sighs> Taking a deep breath, he's just gone into surgery. So uh, I'll let you know how it went. When the surgery had happened and Crow stayed overnight at the hospital and I went home and I didn't have to be on for him. I didn't have to be making sure he was okay. I didn't have to do all of these things. <laughs> Here come the tears. Um, I sat back and poured myself a drink and I said goodbye to my daughter. And then I poured myself a second drink. I said hello to my son. I'm awake for a few hours now. And um, yeah, everything's been good. He did just fine, the doctor said. The surgeon said that uh, everything went really, really, really textbook. So yeah, it's been really good. And they just do those three small incisions and they can take out an entire organ. Plus the little side extras. <laughs> We'd even talked a little bit about maybe saving eggs and maybe in the future and doing all of these things. And the reality is, is that neither one of us is it that important that it is a bloodline going on. Um, if Kian is in the position that he finds uh, a man that, that he loves and wants to marry and they want to raise a family and they adopt kids or maybe his husband-to-be has their own children or has his own children, who knows? Oh, she'll be, she'll be happy if I adopt because then she can have like a cute Korean or Japanese grandson. <laughs> That's one of the things that even when I was modeling and I was like, oh my God, look at all these beautiful Korean stars. And she was like, well, I'm gonna have it. I'm gonna have a Japanese or Korean grandson, aren't I? I'm like, probably, but might not be from me. <laughs> there's, there's no regrets. This is the right thing to do for him. Um, there's no, there's no doubt in my mind. Um, I think he's doing the right thing. I've never seen my kids so happy, so relaxed, um, so comfortable in his own skin as he is right now. And each one of these steps is just making that happen even more. So yeah, it's, you know, you do what you do for your kid, right? A lot of the songs we write are about, let's say, love and loss, struggle, overcoming struggle, and in the end, just kind of finding a peace. Go to sleep with a restless mind, broken thoughts that keep wasting my time. Hold my head in my drink instead, play the visions of you in my head. That's a big thing for us, is to just get our music out there. Really share our stories with them, because I don't think that we're alone in how we feel. Our songs are really a story about those things, so I think that it could connect with a lot of people and make an impact in some way. We like to think we were just killing
the minute I saw Emily, I just knew that this person was different. It was like love at first sight. I can't really explain it. We were just drawn to each other. I have no words to explain it. It's just honestly kind of like magnets. I walked in and I was just like speechless. He like walks in, doesn't talk to me at all. Because I mean, you think like beautiful girl, I'm making an ass out of myself, I need to leave. And Emily thought I hated her. I thought that he was either really shy or hated my guts. I thought she thought I was an idiot and I was trying to not, you know, progress further down that road. For the first two months that I knew him, he would barely speak to me. And our first conversation that we just kind of really clicked was we were at a party and uh, we both happened to be there and we just had this like long conversation about stars. We were talking about the stars or something and that was the first time we had ever had a conversation. And that was the first time he would ever actually like speak to me. And then after that, we just kind of became inseparable. But after that conversation, we clicked and then we just had a ton in common and we were just kind of finishing each other's sentences. Yeah, it was then that we kind of just moved into a relationship and it felt exactly how it was supposed to go. So the wedding will be a uh, backyard barbecue, but still kind of traditional. So we're gonna be having it on my parents' acreage on Vancouver Island. Just our family, our close family and our close friends. Always loved you from the day we met. Your skin on my darling, something I can't forget. I'll always love you. And as we grow Emily knew I was trans from the very beginning. Obviously, <laughs> it's never interfered with our relationship at all. I think he had a harder time with it than I did in the beginning of our relationship because he was scared that I would leave. And I think that had been some of his experiences too previously is that he was like often compared to being not enough of a man and to me he was perfect. But I'm so fortunate that I have someone who's so proud of the fact that I'm trans and so proud of the fact that I am who I am. And that does follow straight through her entire family as well. Emily is totally in love with Cass. When she met Cass, um, she phoned us and she said, Mom, I met this guy and you're gonna totally, totally fall in love with him. And I've never felt like um, I could be more me with anybody. My family was ecstatic. My mom, she loves him so much. Like, sometimes I think even more than me, so it's just... I love Cass. So do I. I have nothing but respect for the man. He's, um, he's a wonderful person, and I can't ask for any more. Will you give your children your blessing? Yes. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. You, you may be seated. <laughs> <laughs> Family is really important to both Emily and Cass. <laughs> yes, in your family too. And join your left hands and arms together so that your wrists and pulses are touching. When Emily came along and fell in love with my son, I was so proud and thrilled that my one concern I had was that he'd found somebody to love him as a human being, as a man that he is. I'm so proud of him. Yes. It's just I need to understand him. How, what he went through, and I don't understand. And honestly, we need to talk and, uh, and talk lots, he and I, about his experience. I want to listen to him, everything, every, the whole the whole journey he went through. And in my... For me, anyway, it's a continuing education on transgender. Whatever happens in the future, we're going to be there for our kids, and that's, as far as we're concerned, is all that counts. You make me happier than I ever thought I could be, and I will spend the rest of my life trying to make you feel the same way. Cass, I vow to always have your back, to each day show you how much I love you. I vow to always be your best friend, partner, and number one supporter. 
No matter what life throws our way, I will always be yours. Emily and Kaz, it is my honor and absolute delight to now pronounce you officially married. <laughs> Begin it now with a kiss. my chest surgery when it kept getting rescheduled and rescheduled and rescheduled. It was to the point that I was like, if I don't get this done before my birthday, I'm just gonna take, I'm, I'm just like in such a frantic state that I'm just gonna take a knife to my chest and just do it myself and have the hospital deal with whatever repercussions. You don't wanna let things get out of control because then you have to take more. And then the flip side, you don't wanna do things too much. So it was, it was very taxing for me to have to deal with such intense body dysphoria and hating myself physically for such a long time. And then having it be so close that I can make a change and then having it be taken away from me and taken away from me over and over again. For some reason, something seems like really wopsided and everything else. Is that something that can be corrected after the fact? So, yeah, I just, I definitely got into some bad head spaces in between, but was able to pull through it. Now this is the real mushroom here. I will. <laughs> Hey, look at you. Got a haircut since last saw you. Nice to see you again. Nice to see you too. <laughs> How was it? Um, it was good. Uh, I had to like reschedule because I got an infection. Mm. So that was really annoying to deal with. You've waited long enough. <laughs> exactly. Right? It's There's like... an urgency all of a sudden. You're like, that can't. Like, I've already got my second my hopes set on this. Yeah. Let me have it. <laughs> like, how was it when the bandages came off and you saw it for you saw your chest for the first time? Amazing. Good, yeah. I mean, I still have like a tiny hole in my nipple because mm -hmm. the stitch like healed funny and yeah. then it was stuck in there. So I had to like get tweezers and take it out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was awkward. You don't have any other scars like? No, well, aside, I think that the scars from the tubes, mm -hmm. the drainage tubes, yeah. those are probably going to be like more scar than the nipples themselves. So, <laughs> you know, so yeah. How did you feel after your whole surgery situation? Yeah. <laughs> I think I'm stronger also personally and like emotionally after having endured it. It was part of the process to get to feeling great, right? But I don't regret a single second of it. <laughs> yeah, it's hard to regret something that like has such a positive impact yeah, on your life. Yeah, that changes like... your life long term. The small, the small hardship for, for the long term gain and benefit, right? Oh, yeah.
This is coming up to almost three years since I started testosterone, but definitely three years since I decided to start transitioning and just kind of go for it. And I can definitely see a large improvement in my life and how I'm feeling, how I feel about how other people perceive me and just generally living as a guy. Hey, hey there he is. <laughs> Doing good. It's good to see you. I definitely view myself as just a gay man, able to do or wear whatever is obviously yep. like socially acceptable, but I think that it comes more from a confidence of being who I am and comfortable with who I am and who I'm presenting as versus before where I would be very like afraid to be seen a certain way or thought of as a certain thing, so. <laughs> the last time we were here was this exact same space. Mm -hmm. That was uh, about two and a half years ago. I wanted to continue, uh, you know, something a little bit different. Sweet. Let's go take a look. How have you been? Doing good. You gotta put on some weight. I, I, I'm, I'm attempting, slowly yeah. but surely. <laughs> <laughs> so I really kind of wanted to do more of a street kind of vibe because I think you have a really good look mm -hmm. to pull that off. What do you think? New and fresh. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, something that you know we've done before, but now in you know now we're we're doing it with a whole new set of clothes. I, I want you to be able to really ex express yeah. uh, with this one, and we'll we'll get that out of you today. Oh hell right? yeah! I feel like it's based around you a little bit because you have a really cool, unique style. Thank you. Uh, and I think you can pull all this off. Really cool pants. Oh yeah, I got the white jeans. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's kind of what yeah, I'm aiming I love for. It. Awesome. The biggest change that I noticed from the last time we worked together mm -hmm. is how happy you look. <laughs> you are radiating happiness and confidence. It really, really shows and it's very nice to see. If he stands up straight, <laughs> if he stands up straight, this will be cut off. Yeah. So now you have her to not piss off. <laughs> That's what you gotta do. <laughs> yo, yo, yo. Think about it in a in a very like I don't give a shit kind of kind of look. You're not. It's not about you know looking pretty and that sort of thing because you look great in the clothes already, right? Yeah. Have you have have, have this out? Lean yeah. Back. Lean back. Do these kinds of movements and uh, you, you can even give me profile. You don't have to look at the camera every time. Mm -hmm. But just make this be, you know, an exercise for you to just uh, try and, and move just like you did before, but now yeah. it's a, you know, now in a whole kind of different side. Yeah. 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 All right. You know. Sweet. <laughs> you know it. All right, here we go. Okay. Good. Keep moving. Good. Pissed off like that. <laughs> Are these working? Uh, Dexter, amazing. your first shot as always. <laughs> what? Yeah. First, first frame wonder? First What's the first shot? God damn you! <laughs> <laughs> See? That's first amazing. shot. <laughs> that is so good. That's great. Oh, yeah. Wait, let me just okay, well, let's all go home now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That looks fantastic. <laughs> wow, what an amazing day. An amazing day. It was fantastic that uh, right off the first, the first frame, we got the attitude and that set the tone for the entire day. He was willing to unlearn some of the things that I was already catching him doing. He knew that he had to unlearn a lot of those things, so he was very willing. Now that he's going after the male model market, Toward the end, it was effortless. At, at the end, he knew what he had to do. He was more conscious with it this time, and that's, I, I think that was the, uh, the, the breakthrough. All right, ready? One, two, three, go. There was a lot riding on this production. These shots were crucial. There had to be something that would... Uh, Actually, I like that. Look down, look down, look down, look down. That would really show his range. Now you'll just be able to just turn this on. Awesome. Right? Yeah. And your value, you know, in that in that sense will just skyrocket. This is a, a beautiful, cohesive story all put together. Look at this, the steps that you've made. This is all outside your comfort zone. Look at you. <laughs> what do you think, Mom? I love it. 
I yeah. absolutely love it, yeah. I think we, we accomplished a great deal here. This is exactly what I had in mind, but it's, but it's even better. I'm glad I could deliver. <laughs> yeah. Oh, this is fantastic. I think we got a lot of great stuff, right? So good job. Thank fantastic so work, everybody. Thank you, everyone. Yep. That's a wrap. Well Woo! done. Thank fantastic. you. Fantastic. My happiness scale, uh, if I was at a two in happiness before, I'm probably at like a 25 out of 10. <laughs> so. because I have a great request for an incredible show in Paris, mm -hmm. uh, looking for trans men for their, actually their women's show. Oh, okay. So they want a trans boy who is transitioning. Mm -hmm. I know you've finished with your transition, um, to wear men's clothes in the women's show. Nice. Okay, so we're gonna head this way. We start off by doing the digitals. They wanna see you just the way you are. Mm -hmm. And then we'll do a walking video. So we're gonna start over here. Yeah. You've been doing this a long time. Mm -hmm. You're seasoned. Yeah. <laughs> which is great. <laughs> this tank works oh, so yeah. well. Oh yeah, so people. <laughs> yeah, you see what I mean? Isn't that perfect? Yeah. Bam, 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 think in your head, bam, 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 all the way down, strong and fast, okay? What's gonna happen moving forward is I'm gonna to put together this material and send it to the casting director. Okay, let's see. All right. And see what they say. Hopefully they, um, they want to option you. Sweet. Sweet, that's perfect. Okay, Yay. it's such a pleasure meeting you and I would love to represent you as a model mm -hmm. in Vancouver, or be mother agent and place you around the world and all that kind of stuff. How does that sound to you? That sounds great. Fabulous. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to Liz Bell. Thank you very much. <laughs> I'd like to thank my mom. We were always very close, even before I transitioned, so having her support there, like, really means a lot to me. This is the start of a whole brand new And hear us. <laughs> yeah. So you be safe, you have fun. Yeah, it's been amazing having her in my life and having her just be part of this whole process and this whole transition. Just loving me for who I am. When I transitioned, I was doing it for me. And that meant that if I had to cut people out of my life so that I could survive, so that I could be happy with my life, that's the decision I had to make. And it was a big decision. I don't know if you can see in the very, very far corner, right over there. But yeah, that's the Apple Tower. I'm in Paris. <laughs> I'm gonna do a little exploring around, 
and then uh, I still have the casting to go to. So I don't really have any anxieties about trying to be a male model. I don't know if it'll go well or not, but still gonna go in and hope for the best. Hey! Hey! Oh, welcome to Cloud. Great to see you. Oh, great to see you. Your big day. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> yeah, like your first big thing as a male model. Yep. Like you can't get better. <laughs> Louis Vuitton! <laughs> yeah. Imagine. They had let me know that you're gonna be doing like makeup tests, hair tests, things like that. Mm -hmm and then looks, and then you'll walk and show them. So walk, like, with yeah. that power we talked about. <laughs> yeah. So we'll go in. All right, sounds All right. good. So I went to the job interview, and uh, I got it. I'm going to be walking in uh, Fashion Week for Louis Vuitton. <laughs> so, yeah. Like, wow. I don't know how many other trans men are going to be there. So, I could be one of a couple. I could be just one. I don't know yet. When I was um, doing the rehearsal, actually, it was funny because they had us do it um, twice once in the outfit and then before the hair and makeup and then once after the hair and makeup. Um, and both times when I was doing the walk, they were saying like, oh my God, amazing, fabulous, fantastic. Like they were just like throwing out compliments and I had to like maintain my neutral expression and not smile. <laughs> but yeah, I was like, oh my God, I'm so glad they like it. <laughs> the last time that I walked, I wasn't even 18 yet at that point. And I'm 22, almost 23 now. It's interesting, like, being comfortable after three years in this body to be able to, like, move the right way. Luckily, I don't have to deal with heels, so thank God I'm not a female model right now. <laughs> Starting as a female model at 12 years old and then stopping after uh, just reaching 18 and then being able to switch over and become a male model and have Louis Vuitton as my first like real job just like out there amazing. opportunity that this presents and to be like that big of a bang in the fashion world to start with. Wow. <laughs> Yeah, 
Whatever you want to do, it doesn't matter what your job is or what your career path that you want to take, your gender doesn't matter. You know, you can change over, you can be in between, you can be whatever you want, and you can still be happy. So, what I'd like to say to the transgender community is that, um, <laughs> is that it doesn't matter whether you're male, female, in between. <laughs> You can make your dreams come true. <laughs> Just keep trying, never give up. <laughs> and you could be here doing this, doing whatever you want. So. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. Jessica's gonna come and give you a hug. Absolutely. <laughs> it's been a great pleasure to walk with you, to Absolutely. work with you, Carl. It's, it's, you're so inspiring to all of us. Thank you so much. Walking with you, my first wrong way with you is being great. You're so inspiring to me, really. I hope that you get to be really happy, okay? Thank you so much. Really, you're the best. I hope that you can, we can work together later. Okay? Absolutely. And hey, maybe we'll walk on Men's Fashion Week together. Maybe we can work on <laughs> Men's Fashion together. <laughs> yeah. Maybe I will be a male by then. Yeah. Who knows, right? I know, right? Oh, man. I love you. Yeah. Thank you so Keep much. Keep on being so strong. You are hope to everyone else. Think about all the people who doesn't have that strength to be free. Who yeah. doesn't have that, that uh, strength to just uh, face everyone's opinion and everyone's bad feelings about us. We just need to be humans. That's what we need to be. The gender doesn't matter. We're all humans. Okay? Yeah. And you're so you're so inspiring for all of us. Thank you so much. Louis Vuitton is the best, right? I know, right? <laughs> it made us free. Louis Vuitton made us gave us this chance for people like him, for people like me who's not yet trans uh, in transition, uh, give us a chance to be free. And that's amazing. <laughs> Awesome. <laughs> see you at the party, bro. Thank you so much. Oh, yeah, I'll see you at the party. I'll see you at the Get party. Get cleaned up. <laughs> yes. Don't ruin the makeup. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Oh, uh, all right. Thank you so much. Oh, well, thanks to you, really. Thanks to you. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> okay. I rise to support the motion that this house supports a SOGI 123 within our schools to help create safe and inclusive learning environments. Trans kids exist, we know that. And to pretend that they would just cease to exist if we didn't talk about them is just baloney. It's bogus, it deserves no place in this debate. Because it's amazing seeing that there's this many people who take their time so that they can help others feel comfortable in the space that they they share.
Okay. Cool. That was and that was the best one. Yeah, I so, think yeah. so too. Yeah. yeah. Cool. 